the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. A leper came to him and kneeling down begged him and said, if you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched the leper and said to him, I do will it be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. Then he said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus is God. That's why he could take this sick man, this man who had leprosy, which was a horrible disease back then. You couldn't go into town. You had to be isolated. Nobody could touch you. And if, they had, if you did touch somebody, you had to, like, go make yourself clean and separate your people for a long time, kind of like COVID was a little bit, right? You get COVID, you had to go away. You couldn't be around people for a while. It, it made life really, really, really hard. And Jesus knew everything. So he will cure this man. He said, don't tell anybody. Jesus knew he was going to go tell people. He knew that he was going to disobey Jesus. And he still healed him. He still cured him. By disobeying Jesus... It made Jesus' life a lot harder. He wanted to keep his healing power a secret. Any ideas why he might have wanted to do that? Any ideas why he might have wanted to do that? Jesus doesn't want to be like a pop machine or a candy machine, okay? Well, I'm going to get, go to Jesus because I want something. Jesus can give me this, so I'm going to go see Jesus and get what I want from him. Jesus does not want us to look at him that way. Jesus wants to give us everything we need, but we are called to love him and to help other people love him. As we grow up, it's hard. It's hard to listen to your mom and dad. It's hard to listen to your teachers. And you know the difference between listening and hearing someone? Like if you hear your mom and dad say, clean up your room, I hear you. But when you listen, you go clean your room. In other words, what you hear makes you change. It helps you do what's right. If your teachers say, do your homework, and you do your homework, you listened to them. And that's what our world really needs more than anything else. People who listen, who let the word of God come into their hearts and change them. And when we listen to God, man is our life so much better. But it's hard. Ask the Holy Spirit to come into your hearts so that you might listen to what God is inviting you to do. 
like God invites every Catholic on earth to come to Mass every Sunday. And that's really, really good for you. But a lot of Catholics don't listen. They don't think it's important. Does that mean that God doesn't love them or God's not going to help them? Not at all. He still loves them and helps them. But they hurt themselves by not listening to God. Just like you hurt yourself if you don't listen to your teachers. If your teachers are telling you to do something, to learn something, study, read books, whatever, and you don't listen to them, you're the one who suffers. It's you're the one who gets hurt. So try and listen. Let's be a people who listen. And let's try and listen to God especially. Because it's really cool. I would encourage anybody who can do this, but especially the teachers, try and take 15 minutes a day and listen to Mike Schmidt's Catechism in a Year. Just 15 minutes a day. Just, you know, while you're getting ready, whatever in the morning, just have it on your phone and listen to it. Usually it's only like 10 paragraphs a day, 15 minutes a day or so is what the normal average thing is. I think it's day 12 now. But let your hearts be filled with God's teaching. Don't just hear it. Listen to it, okay? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs> Let us stand as we bring our prayers of intercession before the Lord. Okay. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That church leaders will grow ever closer to our Lord so that their lives will reflect his teaching. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are suffering in mind of body will find healing and consolation through our care and support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially our loved ones, may they be blessed with comfort, hope, and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders around the world that they might find ways to bring an end to war and violence and promote peace and the de development for our nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For all the earth that our nation's leaders will be inspired by God's creation to the protect all of his creation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For James Peter, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that our hearts grow not hard, like in the first reading, and ask the Lord to help us truly listen to him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory hymn is number 16, 618 in the glory and praise, all that we have. Number 618 in the glory and praise. 